Good morning. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. You have made a beautiful choice this morning to look for Jesus. You are looking for Jesus. You are not here by mistake. You are on purpose. I just want to say sorry. We are late. Technical issues. Yeah, we can always blame technical issues. But sorry, we are late this morning. Welcome to the presence of the Lord. You are most welcome. You are blessed this morning. You are blessed because you have chosen to seek the presence of the Lord. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. So get ready in your heart. Get ready in your heart and say, Sweet Holy Spirit, have your way this morning. All right. Shall we make our declarations of today? would like us to go back to Psalm 63 that we've used before. We want to declare and let God know that we mean what we say, that he is our God. We are not seeking anything thing else anyone else we don't want anyone else we want the god of abraham isaac and jacob the god of israel the god that came to earth as a human being to die for the sins of human beings so that we human beings can be set free from our sins jesus came to shed his blood so that our blood can be cleansed. Our sins can be washed away. So today we want to declare to him, God, you are my God. Psalm 63. A psalm of David when he was in the wilderness of Judah. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. Father, we lift up our hands in your name this morning. We come to you by the power of your Holy Spirit in the matchless name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We have chosen you. It is not something anybody has Forced us, to, forced us to do or pushed us to do is something we have considered and we say God you are my God creator of heaven and earth you are my God possessor of heaven and earth you are my God the God that gives us the air to breathe the God that allows the sun to shine in the morning and the God that is in charge of all the galaxies. The almighty God. Infallible God. Omnipotent God. Omnipresent God. Indescribable. Unsearchable. Yet, this mighty unsearchable God makes himself available to human beings. God. You are my God. And that's why I seek you on purpose. And that's why I seek you with all my heart. Holy Spirit, we come this morning. We ask that you lead us to Jesus. That you reveal Jesus to us. All the work that he did. Why did God have to suffer for human beings? 
Help us to see this kind of love that human minds cannot comprehend. Lord Jesus, you shed your blood. You suffered shame. You suffered anguish. You suffered disgrace. You were beaten. You were mocked. All because of me. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you did for me. I'm sorry that I put you through all that because of my sin. I confess my sin this morning. I repent of my sin this morning. And I ask that your blood that you shed from Gethsemane to Golgotha will forever wash me clean. Continuously wash me clean. All the stripes that you received. They broke your body. They beat you raw. Let all that beating, all those stripes, all those wounds, may those wounds heal me. In your brokenness, may I be made whole. Father, I thank you. Thank you for loving us so much. You had to close your eyes. You had to turn away. So that Jesus could go through what he went through. So that we can be called children of God. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you are breathing on us right now. That there's no reproach with us anymore. That we are free. We are cleansed. We have become, we have chosen we have chosen to believe in the name Jesus. And that's what your word says. That Jesus came to his own and his own did not receive him. But to those who received him, he gave them the power to become children of God. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Because we have chosen to believe in your name this morning. We receive that power to be supernatural beings. Marco Sarata. We receive that power to be supernatural. Children of God most high. We receive that power in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for giving us this opportunity. We bless your name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Welcome to the presence of the Most High God. It's a privilege to be called a child of God. Just take a moment and, and, and digest that. It's the highest privilege. Anybody who doesn't want this, there has to be something wrong, obviously. So, we will keep praying for them. <laughs> Shall we go uh, into today's service? Please go with me. To the letter of Apostle Paul to the Ephesians. Ephesians. The epistle of Paul to the Ephesians. We shall read from verse 1 to Ephesians chapter 1. We shall read from verse 1 to verse 14. Ephesians 1, 1 to 14. And it reads, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus. 
verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Verse 9, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Verse 11. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of of his will that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise verse 14 who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless his word and may the power in this word envelop us, sink into us, explode in us, and yield fruit unto eternal life. To the glory of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and for our eternal benefit, through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. 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 Now, you have seen in the, on the screens, the title of our message of today is Tearing Down the Curtain. Tearing Down the Curtain. I use the, 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 the word tearing as opposed to just tear so that we come into the understanding that it is not a one-time event but a continuous event tearing. So we are continuously tearing down the curtain. All right. So in the context of our message today, what is that curtain that we are talking about? What curtain are we tearing down? Follow me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Just page backwards. A few pages in from your Bible to your left because Corinthians comes before Ephesians, okay? Just do a few pages to the left and you see Corinthians. So 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. It says, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 
So what are we doing? We are casting down. We are tearing down. And these are things from up. So you tear them down. They are up there. You are tearing them down. Because they want to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God in your life. So you tear them down. You pull them down. You scatter them. You refuse that they should have dominion over you. Okay. So what are these things? Like I say, it's up here. The wrong ideologies is in the head. False teachings is in the head. Deception is all in the mind area. Lies is all in the mind area. Wrong thought patterns, all in the mind area. Vain imaginations, all in the mind area. Arguments that are self-destructive. All there. Because they, all these things I've mentioned, they cause us to walk in rebellion to the perfect will of God. God has predestined us to, 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 be, to be right, to, to live right. Because he, we are his children and he is perfect. But because we came to this broken world through the sin of Adam and Eve, and if we don't have the right teachings, we receive wrong teachings. And so we build up this, you know, uh, uh, arguments, wrong arguments, wrong thought patterns in our minds. And these things, because we didn't learn it right, they cause us to live against the, the will of God. So the, the tide of God is flowing this way. And we are flowing against the tide. We should be flowing with the tide of God. We shouldn't be flowing against the tide. So if we don't have the mind of Christ, we have a different mind, trust me. It's either or. Okay? It's either or. So we must choose what mind we want to have. It's as simple as that. What do you want to receive in your mind? If you do not have the mind of Christ, you have the mind of his enemy. So you are working against yourself because Christ created you to be like him. And we, even when we missed it, he still came to pay the price to buy us back. So you cannot say you were left alone. He has done everything he has ever needed to do so that you can live right you can think right you can act right <laughs> these all these things in the in the realm of the mind work against us on a daily basis they work against us because they work against God's perfect plan for us. So this word is coming to remind you to retrace your steps. And because we think daily, that means we have to choose daily to work on our minds. We have to work on these things on a daily basis. That's why I call it tearing down. So it's a continuous tearing down. A wrong thought comes into your mind, shut it down. Something, Somebody says something that you know is wrong, shut it down. Don't entertain wrong thoughts and ideologies. You are harming yourself. You are depriving yourself. So on a daily basis, tear it down. That's why the title is tearing it down as opposed to just tear it down. I need us to get that. We must work on the thoughts that we entertain. Work on it on a daily basis. What am I thinking of? Why am I thinking of this? How did this 
thought come into my mind? How did it happen? So you work on it. Be mindful, be, be mindful of what you think of or what you brood on or brood over, what you entertain, what you are, you know, like chewing over. When you are just sitting, maybe you are idle and some stupid thought comes into your mind because so not it, it will come in. You may not realize it at, at, you know, immediately sometimes. But once you realize, what am I thinking of? Shut it down. So you are tearing down those strongholds that exalt themselves against the knowledge of the perfect will of God for your life. So you take them captive and you tear them down. If we are in a big church, I would ask everybody to repeat Tear it down. So just repeat it to yourself where you are. I am tearing it down. Do not entertain wrong thoughts. Because it leads to the wrong path. Satan will come and, and, and whisper it. And if you are not careful, you start, you know, agreeing with Satan. Agreeing with Satan. Agreeing with Satan. Until it, it manifests. And then you'll be wondering what happened. It's because you entertained it. You entertained it. You refused to shut the door. So let's be mindful. Of the things we think of. If you don't like it. Then don't think of it. If it doesn't. If, it, if it's not going to bring you. Good fruit. Then tear it down. Pull it out. Pull it down. So, these are the curtains that either expose us to danger or reveal the dangers to us. And of course, consequently, if they are revealing the danger, it will lead us to the truth. So, that's, what, that's why I'm, I'm calling it curtain. The curtain in, in our homes, yeah, in the natural, they are there to cover us or protect us from prying eyes. When people pass, you know, by your house, they, some like to peep and see. Okay? So the curtain protects you in that sense. So during the day, you pull the curtain apart to let in daylight. But during the night, you pull the curtains to, to con you know, to conceal your house. So you have to now apply that to yourself. Right now, we want to expose the darkness. We want the, we want the danger to be revealed. So and that's why we are talking about wrong thought patterns, all those things, wrong ideologies, false teaching, deception, lies, um, vain imaginations, all these things that cause us to be rebellious to God. We pull them down. You don't conceal it. You open the curtain. Let the light of God come in and expose all those wrong things so that we can always live right. It is for our own good. You're not doing it for your father. You're not doing it for your mother. You're not doing it for your best friend. You're not doing it for your husband or wife. You're not doing it for your child. You are doing it for yourself. When your mind is clear, then you know what you are doing will be right as well. When the thoughts there are right, then the actions are right. It's what you program in that plays out, right? Whatever you program in is what is going to come out. You, you can try to... to uh, uh, cover it up one way or the other, but one day it will be exposed. It will be exposed. So don't cover up evil. Expose it. The sooner you expose it, the sooner you can deal with it. Don't cover it up. You are not doing yourself any good. Look for help. Look for somebody you can trust. And expose what is wrong. So. And so I'm saying. This curtain. 
we are pulling we are children of the day we are children of the light so light must shine on all that we do so that satan does not use those dark moments to come and trip us and make us fall stay in the light we are children of the light tear down any form of obstruction don't entertain them all right the letter that we wrote today uh, read today the letter of apostle paul to the ephesians helps us to see our inheritance in god through christ jesus he 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 made he you know if you read the whole book you see how he 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 builds up this argument he brings he brings it out what we own who we are everything that is ours in god don't don't give up your inheritance you are a child of the most high god you are royalty don't let anybody take your inheritance away from you because jesus did it for you you don't have the power to help yourself so god himself came in your image because he created us in his image so he had to come in our image to help us it is not rocket science if you read genesis 1 26 god said let us make man in our image so when god needed to help man in which image would he come not a donkey he had to come as man. We need to get wash your mind, clean it off with, from all the nonsense. Just think logically. If God says, let us make man in our image, and then he wants to come and help man, how, how else was he supposed to come? As a butterfly, as a, as a donkey, as a, as a, as a what? He had to come as man. So Jesus is the man God. And he was here on earth for roughly 30 years and he went back. And he's still alive because he's God. Don't be deceived anymore. You have the facts. Make up your mind. I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just bringing you the facts. So that you can look at them and make up your mind. Then be quick because you haven't got, you don't know what's going to happen the next minute. On the day Jesus died, the curtain was torn that concealed the most holy place. Those were shadows. God had to prove himself to be holy to human beings. So in the temple you could come in. Then the priest could go into the holy place. But he said don't come into the most holy place. That's my place. Just like he told Adam and Eve. That's my tree. Don't touch it. So it was only the high priest once a year. That could by the grace of God. Dare to enter into the most holy place. That was God's presence. You could see it from outside. The, his glory was there. There was no lamp. But the, that place was always bright. The children of Israel had it all. God used them to teach us. So but the day Jesus came and finished the work. So the, the, the shadow was now over. He says this is the real thing. Now you can access heaven. That's why the curtain in the most holy place had to be torn down. So a, a, a place that even the high priest would be shivering going into once a year. Now everybody had access. So anybody that ever wanted to find out what the most holy place Look like he had access. You have access. I have access to God Almighty. 
Because Jesus opened that door. He paid the price so that when you step in, you step in through him. He covers you. His blood protects you. Because the, the presence of God is still holy. Too holy for this flesh. So we've got to live in the spirit. So you accept this almighty God in you. Imagine you carrying the God that created everything you can think of and everything you can't even think of that is available in this world. All the galaxies, everything, the depths of the sea that people have not yet explored, the, 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 the uh, planets that people have not yet Imagine that God choosing to live in you. Think how you will be. That is only because Jesus paid the price and gave you that ability. On your own, you cannot do it. That's why Jesus has to live in us. We have to accept him, make him Lord of our lives, accept him as Savior, as Redeemer, the one that delivered us from, from our wrong thought patterns. And now he says, through me now, you can enter the most holy place. You, can, you, can, you have access to the Father. On your own, you can do it. So don't even try. It will be a wasted effort. That's why God had to show it in the physical for years and years and years. So the children of Israel, he just chose them to use, to teach the rest of the world. He, 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 he taught them, you know, how to approach him, how to approach him by sacrifice, by blood. And then Jesus came and said, my blood is the last blood you will ever need to shed. My blood is enough for all generations, for all mankind. If you want to enter into daddy's presence, you need my blood. That's why you need Jesus. That's why you have to repent of ignorance. And say, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you saved me. That's why we must tear down this curtain of ignorance today. Tear it down. Don't, don't, don't keep dwelling on age old things that you, you've tried it. And you know it's not working. Why keep trying? Why don't you try out something else? The Bible says test and see that the Lord is good. It's not by force. I, I put food before you. Something you don't know. First you test. And see whether you like it before you eat it. Nobody is shoving it down your throat. By force. I, I've, I don't know this kind of food. I've never eaten this kind of food before. Let me test it. That's all. You, you are not forced to swallow it. Just test it. If you, don't, if you truly don't like it, then walk away. Make up your minds. So Jesus tore down the curtain, the veil. In the most holy place. Until today. It's still torn. Because God will not be mocked. That veil. That curtain. Is still torn 2,000 years later. So that you know. That there was power. In what Jesus did. Otherwise the Jewish people would have built a temple already by now. 2,000 years on. I know they are thinking of rebuilding it. Yeah, it, or it will all work out. But this is proof that somebody died. The, the, the moment he died, there was earthquake. Everything shook. And this most holy place was now laid bare. Should that not tell you something? How can the death of somebody 
cause something like that to happen? Was Jesus the, the first and the only person that died that day? We need to open our minds up, tear it down. All the wrong ideologies, tear it down. And tear it down continuously on a daily basis. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. You cannot mock him. Stop waiting. You have complete access to God. You have all the facts. You just need to Google. And if your heart, <laughs> if your heart is looking for the truth, you will find the truth. For those of you who know me, my message has three words. Focus, Jesus, heart. All the message I preach hangs on those three words. When you focus on Jesus, receive him into your heart, then you will live from the place of that heart. You live from your heart. So, and everything in the heart is love. Think about it. Focus. Jesus. Heart. You don't need to learn more. The moment your, your focus is on Jesus. And you allow him. God almighty. Because he is spirit. He comes into your heart. Then it's over. Then everything you do. Now. Comes from that place. Everything you do is now motivated by what is in your heart. And if Jesus is in your heart, then only love is in your heart. Power is in you. Freedom is in you. Boldness is in you. Let us think. And if you are still struggling, my question now is, could it be your sinful nature speaking louder than your senses. If you are still resisting Jesus, could it be that your sinful nature is still speaking louder than your senses, than your common sense? Yeah, sin, sin is powerful. Sin is powerful. The flesh, the flesh is powerful. If your heart tells you to accept Jesus, if your heart tells you to seek this God that I'm talking about, then look for a way to do it. Ask the right questions, you will receive the right answers. Don't let Okay, it looks like we have an issue on YouTube. So I'll just carry on on Facebook. Later we can upload Facebook to YouTube. I'm sorry about for those who are on YouTube now. Just go and go to the Ministry of the Living Jesus on Facebook, please. If you're on YouTube and there are issues, please go to the Ministry of the Living Jesus on Facebook. Okay, there's an issue. That's why we, we didn't... Uh, even start early this morning. So please go to Facebook and continue. All right. So the point is, accept Jesus in your heart. And if you don't know whether you should, then sit quietly in a place. No noise. Just let your life play before your eyes. Let your life, everything you know so far about your life, let it, you know, replay it. And then go to Google. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not advertising Google, but everybody knows Google these days. 
type in the right questions if you if you don't want to ask me because you have you have access to me as well you can write to me type in the questions that you have and then study the answers if your heart is right god will lead you to the right answer because of course there's there's so much rubbish on the internet anyway but if your heart is right, if you are truly seeking the true God, that true God, seeing your heart, not, not your mind, because God sees your heart, he will lead you to the right answers. That is guaranteed. Because he loves you, he already died for you, and he wants only the best for you. Okay. Don't let your flesh speak louder than your senses. The wisdom that God has put into you. If your flesh is still speaking louder, the sinful nature of flesh is the sinful nature. We were all born into this broken down world. Okay? So we we have the sinful nature. So if, if you don't get rid of the sinful nature, you continue to live like that. And what gets rid of the sinful nature? The sacrifice of Jesus. Because his blood is pure. Only the blood of Jesus can wash away, get rid. His death and resurrection alone can get rid of us because the sinful nature must be crucified that's why jesus had to be crucified if you die on your own you have no way of coming back but if you die in christ you live forever we all live forever one way or the other so you have to choose am i dying to in, am I dying in my sin and, and continuing to live that sinful life forever? Or have I chosen Jesus, died to self and taken his life to live forever? Imagine God giving you his life to live. That is supernatural. That is spirit. So... Think, like I said, think of your life. Don't wait. Don't wait any longer. You have the opportunity today. Use this opportunity because tomorrow might be too late. The Bible says, if today you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Everything is in the heart. If your heart is right, then the rest is right. Okay, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, I just want to touch on verse 18 and 14 first of all before I go to where I want to go. Ephesians 1 13 says, In him you also trusted. So you have to trust in Jesus. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. That's what I've just been talking about. The word of truth has been presented on a golden platter to you right now. So if you choose to do right, you trust in this word of truth. Listen to what Paul is saying. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation. You are only saved by trusting in this word of truth. That's the only way you are, your uh, um, life is saved. You are, you are secure in a good place. You heard the word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation. 
in whom also having believed, so you hear it, you receive it, you believe it. Once you believe, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That's what I'm saying. You hear the word, you, you receive it, you believe it. The moment you believe it, the Holy Spirit of God hits your being and he seals you up. So now you are born again. You are, at that moment, you are a brand new creature. The old self is gone. So now you, you are a baby in the Lord. The Holy Spirit seals you because you have dead <laughs> to believe in Christ and the work he did. He's, he's suffering, he's dead, his burial, his resurrection. This word of salvation, you believe it and the Spirit of God seals you and he sets you apart. Now you are holy unto the Lord. You are God's baby from now on. He protects you. He, 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 he jealously watches over you because you dared to trust him. Verse 14. So you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Who is the guarantee? <laughs> He's the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. The, there is, God is giving you guarantee. It's not insurance that you pay. And then when something happens, they start telling you stories. Oh, you missed one uh, 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 installment. Or oh, no, the insurance, you look, read, read the fine lines. It only covers you when you are in the house. It doesn't cover you if you were out of your house when that happened. Come on. The word of God is giving you guarantee. Either you take it or you leave it. But don't say you were not told. Read it again. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. That's why I say if you are looking for the truth, you will find the truth. If your heart, not your brain, the brain cast it down. That's what we are talking about. Tear all that nonsense down. Let your heart lead, lead you. You hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, because that's what saves you. That's why Jesus is called Savior. You believe in him. That moment you are sealed by God. You see, now you are his own because you believe in what he's telling you. Okay. You won't say you won't say you didn't hear that one. Let's carry on. Because the moment you receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes, he becomes your guide, daily guide. The Holy Spirit becomes your daily teacher. So you can't you are not born into the into the household of God and then they just leave you alone to find your way. No, no, no. <laughs> you have God Almighty as your teacher because you dare to trust Him. It's love, it's, it has to be trust. The Holy Spirit now becomes your daily guide, your daily teacher, your instructor, your counselor, your helper in everything. He is there for you 24 7. You lie down, you sleep, you have a, a bad dream, you jump up from your dream or whatever, and you say, oh, Jesus, help me. He was already there. Remember Peter when he was sinking? Before Peter could say, Lord, help, he was already there. He had Peter's hand. You are never alone. The Holy Spirit, because his spirit, he's always there. It's up to you and I. It's not up to God. God has already you know, made you to be his child. Sin cut us off from that lineage. So Jesus came back, brought you over. So we are back in the lineage of God. That's mind-blowing. 
you are you have always been God's child. Sin stole you away. Ignorance stole you away. Wrong worship, wrong teaching stole you away. Satan is a thief. He stole you away from your inheritance in God Almighty. Jesus paid the price, bought you back, so you are back in the lineage of God. The blood of Jesus now flows in you, around you, through you, everywhere. He, that's why the Holy Spirit is always there, hovering over you. You have been sealed the moment you realize this thing. Then you grow from there because you are a baby now. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. He's your director, he's your teacher, he's your counselor, he's your helper. Let him help you. Don't resist him. The flesh will still tell you, oh, you, you heard it wrong. No, no, no. Your heart will tell you the right thing. I don't care what this one tells you. That's why you have to tear it down. Your heart will tell you the right thing. The Holy Spirit will now lead you from this moment or from the moment you accept Jesus, you, the Holy Spirit now leads you in the paths of righteousness. He guides you through life. So you listen with the ears of your heart from then onwards. You are no longer helpless. You are no longer confused. Because you have almighty God himself. That you can consult at any time. You, you don't be desperate. You cannot be desperate as, as a Christian. You have the Holy Spirit. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will counsel you. Because through Jesus. We have now been adopted. Into God's household. So let's look at that from the book that we read now. Ephesians 1. Let's go from verse 3. Talking about adoption. So let us look at it. Because you need to get it. The word is clear. But you need to sit in a quiet place. And listen. And take it in. And God will help you at any level that you are. So, Ephesians 1 from verse 3. Paul says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. That's God's plan for you. You are blessed in God because you are his child. Verse 4, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, he chose you already. Your book has been written from beginning to end. It was only when God ended your book that you came to earth. You are not trying to find out what to do. Your book has been written. And this before the foundation of the world. That's the almighty God that we are talking about. Every person that ever lived has had their book written from beginning to end. You are never a mistake. Otherwise, you wouldn't even surface. You wouldn't be here. So read that verse 4 again. Just as he, God, chose us in him before the foundation. He chose you. Even though you won't even be listening to this. So listen well. He chose us from before, before the foundation of the world. To do what? That we should be holy. Sin stole that away. Satan stole that holiness away. God is holy. So he created you and I to be holy. That we should be holy 
and without blame before him in love. That's why I'm saying when you act in love, there's, no, there's nothing that can work against you. God is love. He created you in love. He gave you and I everything we ever needed. That's why it says, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. But if you only live here on earth, you don't have access. <laughs> Tear that wall down. Get access to your father. Verse 5. Having predestined us to adoption as sons that means as children by jesus christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will he loves you full stop it is the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom everything belongs to him you you inherit what is your father's And he, he did it out of love. The good will. The good pleasure of his will. What? Does God lack anything? Is there anything you can ask God for that you can't get? The whole world is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Is there anything you, you, you are trying to get? It's because we are getting it from a wrong place. Come, come in, break, tear down those curtains, those walls, those obstructions, so that you can see, so that you can think right. Get rid of the confusion. So we are talking about adoption here. Yeah, verse 5 says, having predestined. So it's, nothing, it's not even anything you did about it. You have been predestined, but you have to now choose Jesus to realize, to come into that inheritance. God has it already made out for you. But if you are born in a rich man's house, your father in the natural is rich, and you choose one day to leave your father's house and go and live on the street, is that your father's fault? That you have nothing to eat on the street? No, it's not. So you have to now find out that that street life is not as good as your father's house, and then you choose to come back. Simple as that. Like the prodigal son. That's the story that Jesus gave about the prodigal son. He had everything he ever needed, he just thought, let me go and see how it looks like in the world. The father said, okay, your choice. Then he went. And then, thank God, he came to himself. And he said, you know what? <laughs> my father's house is actually, but even the servants in my father's house have everything they need. What am I as a son doing on the street? So he went back home. That is the invitation that you have right now. We have been predestined and adopted through Christ to be God's children by, his, by the good pleasure of his will. He only wants good for you. He has only planned good for you. The, the plans that I have for you are good and not evil, he says through Jeremiah. You need to sit down quietly and think of your life. Full stop. He says there, verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, it is by grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. So we are only accepted because of what Jesus did, not, not because of what you think you are trying to do. And when you accept Jesus, that means your heart is right. So <laughs> those walls are torn down. So you are living from a right place. So you don't have to worry anymore. 
Because when you do wrong, your heart will prompt you that you are doing wrong. And immediately you say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. Let's move on. That's the whole point. It is the grace of God. We are accepted because we believe and we receive Jesus and then we start a brand new life. Verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood. What is redemption? He bought you back from Satan who stole you from your, away from your inheritance. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the richness, oh sorry, according to the riches of his grace. It's all by grace. It's love. He, he knows that you cannot do it and he came to do it for you. And he says, if you accept what I did, then we are fine. Then we go back to the original plan. All right. So we must be clear of our identity. We must be clear about our identity in God because he created us to be his children. He himself is a free gift to us. Jesus, okay. when a woman has a baby, what do they say? Bundle of joy. What do you think Jesus was when he came to earth? Bundle of joy. Go and be joyful in his presence. God is a gift to you and I. That's why it's up to you whether to accept the gift or reject the gift. But every, whatever you do, there's consequence. Jesus came to the world as a gift. God himself, God made himself into a bundle of gift for us. And so nobody forces you to accept a gift. So you have to decide. And my, my own advice I want to throw in there, if you are still struggling whether to receive this gift after all that you've heard, then there's clearly a very thick curtain obstructing your way. <laughs> I would use a hammer right now to shatter it. Shatter it. Use whatever you can to shatter that thick wall. Because it cannot be it cannot be real that you've heard all this and you are still wondering. The understanding must come. If you don't accept Jesus at this point, if you don't accept this gift of salvation, the gift of eternal enjoyment in the household household of Almighty God then there's clearly something wrong. So my advice to you is tear it down, tear it down, tear it down. Tear down that obstruction. Look for a quiet place and think about your life. And the, the point here is, in him we have redemption. So he did the work for you. It's not you, but by his, the good pleasure of his will. His grace helps you. That's the whole reason why Jesus had to suffer and die. To give you the gift of life. And this is why the church must wake up in this generation. Wake up from the lies that is everywhere in this generation. The church has the power. Once you accept Jesus, you are translated from the flesh into the spirit. And that's why uh, the Corinthians that we say, he said, though we walk in the flesh, we don't wage war according to the flesh. The moment you accept Jesus, the Holy Spirit seals you off. Then you have the power of God in you. Though you are still in this flesh, you no longer live according to the flesh. You live a spirit-led life from that moment on. And these are those who call themselves Christians. You understand that now you are 
living a spirit-led life. You've been removed. Jesus says you are in the world, but you are not of the world. So even though you are still here, you've been sealed off. And now the Holy Spirit guides you, helps you, leads you, teaches you, and all that. So God calls you in that form, that spirit form, to represent Jesus at any level that you are, whether as a baby or an adult in Christ, it doesn't matter. Now you are living a supernatural life. You must believe it, trust it, accept it. That's why the church must be in control. You are, you are brought into a mystery that your mind could never comprehend before th that time. You are brought into the mystery of spiritual things. So God entrusts you with truths. Jesus told the disciples, it has not been given to them, but it has been given to you. You have been separated. You may still, you know, see them, but you are not like them anymore. At that moment, the curtain is torn down. And you can see. That's when you are sealed away. So you, have, that's when you start to see. You know, mysteries are being revealed to you. Even though at first it might be dim, of course, because you just came in, you're like, where am I, where am I? So it might be a bit dim. But you are in. So now start to look, you know. Foc that's why I said, focus Jesus' heart. As long as your heart is right. As long as you focus on Jesus, then you are living a spirit-led life. You are no more just stumbling. Because I know sometimes when we come to the Lord newly, and everything is still dim, because it's a new world, it's a new life, it's a new everything, Satan will tell you, no, you are not there yet. Aha, uh -huh. remember this word today, shut him up. Shut him up. Say, I chose to come to cross over. And you no longer are in my territory, Satan. You are no longer. I've been sealed. It's because people don't know. Satan will, will come and tell you, oh, you, you, are not, you are not seeing what you think you see. You are not free like you think you are. Tell him I am free. It's because it's not about me. I just needed to accept Jesus. He set me free. Who are you against Jesus? Who are you next to Jesus? You are flat on your face, man. Come on. That's why the church needs to wake up. You have more power than, than your small mind can even think of. Start to seek that power. In Christ Jesus. It's supernatural, it's holy, it's perfect. You rule, you rule here on earth. Tell Satan you have no longer any power over me. No unsettled claim because Jesus paid it all. I have nothing that I could have used to pay you. But God Almighty has everything. And he paid for my redemption. He bought me out of your slavery. Listen, look at what he did for the children of Israel in front of Pharaoh. Showed down like never before. T read the Bible. Read the Bible. It's all there. The curtain must be torn down. Make up your mind to tear down this curtain so that you can see clearly. We are children of light. Let the light come in. Expose all the works of darkness. That has been in your territory all this while. Once you once they are exposed, kick them out. Once you are exposed, kick them out. Kick them out. Be bold. Because you rule. You now you are in charge. As a child of God. You are sealed. So what can happen to you? The Holy Spirit is a guarantee over your life. But what's your problem? As the body of Christ, I rule. Because I'm one with Christ. His blood flows through me. His spirit covers me. We need to wake up. 
there is so much power and freedom in Christ, it's beyond our small brain. Forget it. Your brain cannot explain this to you. Because it's a mystery. And you only see it in the light of God. It's a mystery. It's spiritual realities. Only when the light of God shines on it, that's when you see it. Remember we said it a few days ago, you know. At, on the resurrection day, Jesus was talking to his friends. They were hearing him. They were talking to him. They did not know him. It's a mystery. The spirit world is a mystery. Only God can reveal it to you. And you have access. You have access the moment you have Jesus. Imagine Paul. In let's, that same Ephesians chapter 3, let's flip over to chapter 3 verse 1. We've been reading chapter 1, but let's go to chapter 3 now. Paul says, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles. Paul was in prison, yet he did not fret. He was on a mission. You want to chain me? Chain me. You think I'm acting on my power? Let's watch it. Paul was in prison, but he wasn't bothered. He understood his calling. He says, these chains are for you Gentiles. I'm a Jew, but God has sent me to you. And I need to be bound so that I can talk to you, that I can write letters to you like this to you so that it can be passed on. Imagine if he was just going, giving word of mouth. God does things that you can never understand. But when he calls you, like Paul here, he gave him so much peace that he can clearly say, for this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, not a human prisoner, I'm here on God's mission. For you Gentiles. That is the power of revelation. He understood his calling. He says, this chance is your opportunity. Use it. I'm here because of you. And I'm doing it gladly. So use this opportunity that you have. I've received something marvelous from God just for you. That's why I'm here. God has given me a special message for you. So in your eyes, you see me bound. But no, no, people, I'm not bound. I'm not bound. I'm free. I'm just here to deliver a message. A special message. A marvelous message. Verse 2, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of grace of God, which was given to me for you. Open your mind. This, this is marvelous. How that, verse 3, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already. Paul did not bother about his physical circumstances. He was living in the spirit. He was led by the spirit. He understood that the physical has nothing to do with the work he was sent to do. If you've heard of the dispensation of grace, here is it. And this God revealed to me. He made known, he said, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery. And I've told you this before. By which, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the, in the mystery of Christ. It's like, so that you, you will understand where I get these things from. 
It wasn't my studies in the school of Pharisees. No, this is the school of the Holy Spirit. Don't be deceived. You don't learn this in school. Read what Paul is saying. By which, when you read verse 4, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of God. You will start to see what I see. You will start to know what I know. You will come into the revelation of this mystery that your mind cannot even fathom because it's out of this world. And he says there in verse 5, which in other ages before now was not made known to human beings. What I'm telling you had been hidden from human beings. That's why you have the, the access now. Tear that curtain and receive the revelation. This thing we are talking about had been concealed for generations from human beings. Because human beings cannot understand spirit beings. So the spirit being had to invade the, the, the human realm and expose the human realm to spiritual things. It's as simple as that. Spirit had to invade flesh and expose flesh to the spirit. He says, now I've shown you how it works. Let's go. That is verse 5. These things, he said, which in other ages, in generations past, was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to the holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles, that means non-Jews, should be fellow heirs because God started with the Jews and they thought, no, we, we, we have God. Yes, they have God. But now God says, I'm giving everybody the chance. Even though God did that already, but it wasn't revealed from day one. God was always an everybody God. But now he made it clear because this is the final wrong. He revealed it, verse 6, that the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, should now be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. So Paul says, I'm bound in chains so I can preach the gospel of salvation to you. Take the opportunity while you have it. Okay, verse 8. To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Listen to what Paul is saying. He says, why God chose me, I do not know, because I'm the least of the least. So if you ever thought you, you were unable, join the club. Join the club. Because it's not by your power. Paul says, why God choose me? I don't understand. Because I'm, I'm the least possible option. If you look at it from a human point of view, nobody would choose me. But God chose me. And he handed out to me the unsearchable riches of Christ for you all. I'm a Jew. He sent me to you Gentiles. In my law, previously it was never allowed for us Jews to mingle with you Gentiles. But God has torn down that veil. So now he sent me into your midst. Handed me this Mystery that human minds cannot comprehend. And he says, 
go and tell them that they too belong in the family. What a marvelous message. What incredible love. Verse 9. And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God himself, who created all things through Christ Jesus. God knew that then you were not ready, but today you are ready. So he's revealing it to you. Verse 10, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God, the, 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 when he says manifold, it's like multiples of layers of the, of the truth of God. Human mind cannot get it. Come on. Be for real. We are talking about God here. It's because he loves you that he's inviting you in. It's your privilege. He will always be God. To the intent, verse 10. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. What did I say earlier? As the body of Christ, the church of Christ, you rule, you are in charge. That's why the church must wake up to this verse. We are the ones who teach angels. The angels learn from us. You are so powerful, angels learn from you. That's why they wait on you hand and foot. You are God, small g. You are a child of God Almighty. They serve God, so they serve you. You must know your identity in God. You must know who you are. This thing is not a joke. Read verse 10 again. Ephesians 3 verse 10. All these things happened to the intent that now the manifold, many layers of the wisdom of God might be made known by, by the church. To the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Both the good principalities and the bad principalities. You decide the rule of the game. As a born again Christian. As someone that has been sealed by the spirit of God. Because you did the believe. He entrusts you with so much wisdom, revelation, and power, you have no clue. And because people don't read verses like this, they still cower. When Satan says boo, and they say, oh, oh, don't touch me. He says boo, you raw. Get out. Get thee behind me, Satan. Know your identity in Christ Jesus. Verse 11, according to the eternal, I mean forever and ever and ever, according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. God has already finished it. God never starts anything that he has not already finished because he's the beginning and the end and everything in between. That's why his name is I Am. God is not I was. God is not I will be. He's always now. He has finished it before the foundation of the world. To start to live accordingly 
Live according to your book. Don't look at your friends, what are others doing so I can do the same. Their life is their life. Your life is your life. Has the Holy Spirit to reveal your book to you? What did you send me here for? Which, which territory am I ruling over? Because you are kings here. And you are priests unto the Lord. And that has already been finished before time began. That's verse 11. According to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ our Lord. In whom, verse 12, we have, oh, that word there again. <laughs> what do you have in Christ? Boldness. Because you don't belong to them anymore. You belong to God Almighty. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence. I could never have put all those things together myself if I tried. Listen to that verse. Boldness, access, confidence. And you are still cowering. That means you are not born again yet. If you know your identity as a child of God, I said it already. Satan says, boo. You, you don't even need to. You just look at him. And your mere eye will, will make him disappear. Because he's nothing next to Jesus. Know your identity. Rule on God's behalf here on earth. You have the power. You have the authority. You have the name. You have the boldness. You have the access to the most holy place, to the highest place. And so walk in confidence because of the faith you have in him. You trust him. He entrusted himself to you. So walk his walk. Be the living Jesus. Let people look at you and start to see elements of Jesus all over you. Be the living Jesus. Act right, think right, focus on him. When you, The more you look at him, the more you become like him. Because he's like a chameleon. When a chameleon is in the, in the area of green, he turns to green. When he's in the area of red, he turns to red. If you are long enough in the presence of Jesus, you turn to be like him. Ask Moses. Ask Moses. He was in the presence of God. He came out glowing, radiating with glory. Why? Because he was long enough in the presence of the glory. He will rub off on you. Focus on Jesus, nothing else, no one else. It's your life and eternal life too. Let's round it up. Think I've said enough. <laughs> Therefore, verse 18, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Amen. So whatever you go through, don't let it bother you. You are on top and you are on top only. The rest is just Satan trying to distract you. Stay focused on Jesus. Let the presence of Jesus take over your life. Don't lose heart in any form or in case of any kind of tribulation. Stay focused. When you are in the know, you are in control. You are in the know today. So don't say you are not. The church rules here on earth. We teach angels how much more. Be in the know and be in control. This is your glory in Christ Jesus. This is your portion in Christ Jesus. 
Christ rules in heaven, on earth, under the earth. So if you are in Christ, where do you rule? Come on. Do the math yourself. Tell that curtain. Curtain of doubt. Curtain of laziness. Now we are going to prayer. Tell that curtain, I am tearing you down today. That curtain of doubt. That curtain of laziness. That, that curtain of lies and deception. The curtain of fears and confusion. Tear them down. Tell them no more. I'm tearing you down today. I am tearing, I mean right now. I have the power because I walk in revelation truth. I walk in light. So I am tearing this curtain down in the name of Jesus. And as we pray for ourselves, let us pray for the Jewish people. Because some of them are still living in the Old Testament. They have not yet realized that Jesus tore that veil 2,000 years ago. So that they can have access. They can have boldness. They can have confidence. They can come into the presence of God without hindrance. Today, we break down every form of hindrance. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Holy Spirit, help me. You are my helper. I need to come into this mystery. In the name of Jesus, I am tearing this age-old curtain down. I refuse. I set it on fire. Let the fire of the blood of Jesus burn this curtain down. The curtain that has held me back. The curtain that has held my forefathers back. The curtain that has held my father and my mother back. I am burning it down and I am tearing it down. And whatever inheritance that my forefathers have, have lost due to ignorance, I am retrieving it. I'm taking it back. I am taking it back. My, the inheritance that ran through my generations, my, that my forefathers have lost due to ignorance of the truth of the word of God. I, uh, as I'm tearing down this curtain, I'm taking back my inheritance. So I have to be richer than my forefathers. In the name of Jesus, Paul says we have every blessing in the heavenly places. We need access to those blessings in the name of Jesus. Whatever you want to do, we are not robots. We must not look alike. Whatever your own blessing looks like to you, in wisdom, in knowledge, in understanding, finances, emotion, whether you're a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor, it does not matter. Claim your inheritance. Jesus paid for it for you. It's yours as a Christian, as a born-again Christian. It is yours. Father, we thank you. And we lift up the Jewish people. We lift up Israel right now. We lift up Jerusalem before you and we say lord let this word reach out and touch them let the power of our prayer start to break down remove those age old scales from their eyes let them know that as you sent paul to the gentiles that the the, the curtain had been turned down and they should be free in the lord jesus told his the people in his time he say you you are you are not free. He say oh we are children of Abraham. We are not in bondage. No, if you don't know Jesus, you are in bondage. Oh Father, set us free. The blood of Jesus. I apply the blood of Jesus. I invoke the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Wash us clean. Wash every scale from our eyes. We are children of light. We must see light through through and because of the light of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, reveal the truth to us. Let us no longer walk in darkness. In the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, saints. Let's go into the communion service. I refuse to look at the time today because I want you to get it. If you don't get it today, it will be difficult. Let's do communion. God gives himself to us in different ways. So in the word, we've heard him. And then Jesus' body was broken for us. So that's why we will take the communion.
And we know by revelation truth that we are not eating bread, that we are eating the very body and drinking the very blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His blood must flow in us. This is a mystery. You only understand it when you allow the Holy Spirit to show it to you. Spiritual things don't make sense in the flesh because flesh and the spirit cannot work together. It doesn't happen. It's communion time. Take your elements and let us pray. It is not by our might or power. It's by the same power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit causes things to happen. Remember, right from Genesis 1, the fight had modeled up the earth when Satan was thrown down. And God said, nobody can mess up my work. Come, let's go and put it back together. And then we'll use the same soil that he tried to mess up to rule over him. And so the Holy Spirit was there. Couldn't wait like now. He can't wait to turn this into the body and blood of Jesus. That's how the Holy Spirit was waiting. He hovered over that room. And the Father spoke. Let there be light. And brrr, the light of God came. What is that mess? Get out. You see? That's as simple as it is. Tear it down. Let the light of God come in. Forget imaginations. Oh, that bread. Oh, that wine. No. You, you are seeing bread and wine. But I'm seeing Jesus right in front of me. And because he is God, he just takes his body like this and does it he take. I'm like, yes, Lord, thank you. As simple as that. Mysteries. Mysteries. Paul got it. Don't miss out. Ask God. You showed it to Paul. Show it to me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for sending yourself through your word in the form of a baby, Jesus, to us. Thank you, word of God, for agreeing to be a human being and to come into this world to suffer and die for human beings. That because you are God. Nothing the grave could not keep you. Nothing could can keep the spirit bound. So you rose up from the dead triumphant. And you went back to where you came from. And you say I will release the promise of the father. And that's the Holy Spirit. The guarantor, the guarantee of our salvation. Holy Spirit, we welcome. You say it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We agree with that word. We agree with you right now, Holy Spirit. That is not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. Let these elements, be now transformed to the very body and the blood of our Lord, our King, our Savior, our God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you all the adoration. Lord Jesus, you were broken that we might be made whole. So as we receive the communion, we receive wholeness. Anything that is broken in us, we command them to be made whole in the name of Jesus. Any sickness, by your stripes, 
we have been healed before the foundation of the world. Today we come into that mystery and we receive that healing right now by the reason of this communion. We come into union with you right now, Lord Jesus. We receive you and we say, Father, thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you. Sweet Holy Spirit, thank you. We thank you that we can receive the bread of life and we can live with you as your children forever and ever and ever and ever until we can never count the evers because it's an eternal plan. We bless your name, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In, In Jesus, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, the body of Christ. most precious blood of our Lord, our Savior, our King Jesus. Amen. Pray, pray, pray in your heart. Welcome Jesus in. Let this be real. We are not doing things in the flesh. These are spiritual realities. Holy Spirit, come in and make Jesus real to me in this communion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the revelation in the word today. And thank you for the power in this communion that we just received. We've received boldness. We've received access. And we've received confidence. <laughs> Like the world can never understand. And we declare with our mouth. And we believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord. And we are sealed by his spirit. And we are children of the most high God. And so as the body of Christ. We rule in his place. And so we can boldly say. I am the living Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the privilege to represent you here, on, here in the earth right now. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 See, we are still very much on time. Today, I did, I did not look at the time. I just had to get the message out. Okay. We are at the end of today's service. Remember, you belong to Jesus and nothing else, no one else. If you've made up your mind, that's grace. That's a blessing. Okay? Um, during the week, we have started our week, weekday meetings, prayer you know, prayer meetings and Bible study. So as usual, 6 p.m. UK time, 
the youth Bible study. Make sure you join it. Set a reminder on your phone. Your mind is too, too feeble. Oh, I will remember, I will remember. No, you won't remember because Satan will make sure you don't remember. Why? Because you are coming to receive life. Set a reminder on your phone. 6 p.m. Tuesday evening UK time. Youth Bible study. 7 p.m. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Family Bible study. Set a reminder. If you had to go to work, you will set an alarm as well. So don't fool yourself. God will not be mocked. He, he, he has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. If you fail, it's because you have chosen to fail. He has made sure that you don't fail. So make sure yourself that you don't fail. Because in God's books, you have not failed. Think about that. Okay. Then Thursdays by 9 p.m. is the prayer altar. Come and bring your petition to the Lord. He wants to hear you. He wants to advise you, to counsel you, to help you. It is an opportunity for you. Jesus died for you, not for himself. That's what I'm saying. The opportunities are there. Are you taking them? After the Bible study on Friday uh, night by 7 p.m., we have the fire hour of prayer by 10 p.m. The opportunities are there. People have to Prepare for these things. Like Paul says, I'm in chains because of you. Use the opportunity. 10 p.m. UK time, Friday night. I always say Friday night is church night. So we have Bible study 7 p.m. We have prayer by 10 p.m. God is giving you the opportunity Victoria is only a tool. Paul was only a tool. A Jew sent to the Gentiles to reveal the glory of God. Paul says, I'm here for you. So likewise, I'm here for you. Make use of the opportunity. We are in the process of buying a camera and Jesus said to ask for investors not to beg for money <laughs> you do what your heart tells you to do if you want to invest into your eternal life here is the platform for that you know what your heart is telling you just leave by your heart. Like I've said, my message is clear. Focus Jesus' heart. Once you leave, according to that, you are good. If, when your heart is right with Jesus, when you focus on Jesus, then everything you do is motivated by your heart. That means by love. Because God is love. And he is in your heart. So you can only act in love. So if you make a mistake, you will be prompted by the love of God in you. And you will immediately move over. Don't let anybody deceive you. You, can, you have already succeeded in Christ. So stay there. Amen? All right. I think that's all I have to say today. I've said a lot, two hours, but it's for you. So listen to your heart. Go and listen again. I know you might have got highest 20% of what I said. Go back and listen. You have the whole week. Use your time wisely. God has 
manifolds of, of wisdom in him. Search it out. All right. I release you now. I speak the peace of God over you. I speak the wisdom of God over you. I speak life and contentment over you. I declare over you that the blood of Jesus is your refuge. That the light of the Holy Spirit is your shield today. That you've turned down that curtain. The light has really come in. The light of God is your refuge. And the, the love of the Father is a firewall of protection around you. Let that love, let that light, let the blood of Jesus cover you. Stay in that secret place. Because you are a child of the Most High God. I love you. I bless you. I release you in the name of Jesus. See you soon. Mwah. Bye.